So I'm really excited to talk to everyone about the work we have done recently. It's about an algorithm to identify combination of mutual exclusive alteration in cancer. So as we know, the key challenge in cancer uh, sequencing project is how do you distinguish the driver mutation, which are responsible for cancer from the patient mutation, which are just randomly distributed on the cancer and do not contribute to cancer. And this is a particular difficult problem because in the typical tumor, the number of passenger mutations is way larger than the driver mutation. So one common strategy to solving this problem is to find a recurrence in a large number of samples. And the idea here is that if you mutated gene that are uh, found in more samples than you expect, you'll be a good candidate for uh, a, a candidate for harboring the driver mutation. And so based on this idea, several sophisticated methods have been develop, developed. And no matter which method you use, if you plot the single score for each gene, you'll get a distribution like this one. That's a long tail, and with a few genes that are uh, extremely significant, and a long tail of rarely mutated genes. And this long tail phenomena indeed complicate the problem of finding driver mutation, uh, because we do know there are some genes in the long tail that harboring driver mutation. So one explanation for why there are uh, driver mutation in the long tail like B, is that because it's target pathway rather than individual gene. As you can see here, several TCGS studies although they demonstrate that driver mutation target on the pathway rather than individual genes. So to test the combination of mutation, there are several approach. As you can see here, um, they are very in terms of the prior knowledge they used. So you can either test the enrichment of mutated gene in the non-pathway, or you could identify the significantly mutated uh, subnetwork in this large-scale PPI network. However, uh, such prior knowledge are incomplete. So um, this makes it very difficult to de detect the novel pathway. So in today's talk, I will mainly focus on the approach that without using any prior knowledge, and de novo identify the combination of driver mutation. So one limitation for identify um, uh, using this de novo approach is that you can see here there are just too many hypotheses that have to be tested while still, still retaining the statistical power. So to overcome this limitation, one promising approach we could use is that we can restrict the com possible combination of mutation by focusing on those combinations that exhibit some particular patents. So here is um, one particular patent we can use, which is the mutual exclusive between driver mutation and cancer pathway. Here I'm showing you the previous study. They demonstrate that in a REST RTK signaling pathway, uh, they uh, contain uh, hyper mutual exclusive mutation. As you can see from this mutation matrix with a corresponding gene in this pathway, most patients in this mutation matrix only have one mutation. We call this exclusivity. And in fact, in, in, in the past few years, there are several approaches have been introduced to identify um, the, this mutual exclusive pattern. Like Dendrix, IME first came out. Uh, at almost the same time, and you can see there are tons of approach, improved approach um, to identify the mutually exclusive mutation. So how do these current methods score in the exclusivity? Let's try to formulate the problem uh, in a formal way. Let's you given a binary mutation matrix A, you try to find a combination M of genes that by considering the exclusivity. So dendrix, multi-dendrix, IME, they consider exclusivity and coverage simultaneously, simultaneously to score the gene sets. And in MUX, they use a generative model to score the exclusivity. In MIMO, they use permutation test with coverage as the test statistic to score this gene set or combination. However, MIMO only consider this combination must be appearing in the interaction network. And this method works pretty well. As you can see, MIMO and Dendrix, they have been applied on several TCGS study here. So one limitation uh, in the Dendrix weight function is that we found that Dendrix weight function kind of favor high mutated gene. Here I give you two examples, the two uh, mutation metrics here. They actually have the same coverage 
and perfect exclusivity. And you can see Dendrix cannot distinguish these two metrics, even these two combinations. Even you can see in the top of this matrix that uh, mutual exclusive signal is kind of mostly dominated by this highly mutated gene. And in fact, if you run Dendrix in real cancer result like glioblastoma, you'll find a gene set that with highly mutated gene EGFR with some random gene, they actually report the same score for a gene set that with um, so many well-known cancer genes in there. And so MUX, it's an approach that published last year. They recognize this problem and try to solve that, but you can see end up with actually the same problem. This motivates us to come out with a better uh, scoring function. So we propose a new algorithm called Comet for identify driver mutation based on this contribution. So in the following talk, I will give you an overview based on this contribution. So let's first talk about the first two is the new scoring function and we can identify multiple combinations simultaneously. So we define the problem for score one combination of mutation M is that we're given a binary mutation matrix A, we try to find a combination M of K genes with significantly mutually exclusive mutation, conditioned on the number of mutations in each gene. So turn this in the formal way, we um, um, turn this mutation matrix as a two by two convenient table XM. And each cell in this table uh, tell you the number of sample, whether uh, the gene is mutated or not. So if you can see that the orange table here telling you the number of sample that both genes are mutated, and the blue sample here, blue cells here tell you number of sample, sample that mutated in either one of the genes, which is actually the, is the exclusive mutation. So back to our problem, we would like to ask a question is how do you compute the significance of observed mutual exclusive? Probably everyone is know this is, we can do this in just doing the one side feature test for independent because, to, um, because there are just one degree of freedom for two by two community table that enables us to find the non-independent either toward more co-occurrence or much exclusivity. So you can define a score for a gene set is just to use to sum, to sum the tail probability here toward the direction to uh, more exclusive. So actually this feature exact test for independent for a pair of gene uh, has been already like widely used in several t uh, cancer study, you can see here. So we ask, ask a question is how, what about if you have a combination with three or more genes? The same here, we turn this mutation matrix is the, into a two by two convenient table, XM. Here this table is not two by three, it's higher dimension to two to the K table, like two to the three table. We ask the same question, can we run the one side feature that text the same? The answer is no, because you can see the degree of freedom is just, there are just too many degrees of, of freedom. So for, for one side feature exact test, um, you will have too many ways in which the corresponding vari random variable can be non-dependent. So rather than test independent, we define our test that is it's the sum of the exclusive entry in this table. So it's actually the Bruce, sum of these blue cells. And then we can enumerate all the, ta uh, enumerate all the Pass, uh, all the tables and then sum over, summing over a table property as exclusive or more exclusive than your test statistic. However, there's a bottleneck for this problem is that you, as you can see, the number of tables you have to enumerate um, as I'm showing here in the y-axis will be exponentially increased when you have the k equal four or you, you, even if you have a higher k. Even there are several approach like they use like dynamic programming or like branch and bound strategy for doing the enumerate to efficiently enumerate the table, but they are only suitable for the R by C convenient table. The, as we know, there's no algorithm can do the efficiently enumerate all the table to two by two to the K table, two to the K convenient table. So we propose a new algorithm that can efficiently enumerate two to the K table I will give you the intuition here. So first, is do we need actually enumerate all tables like this gray, gray bar here? So let's back to the most, the case that are we, we are most interested in. It's, it is the perfect exclusive case here. So you can see, um, since it's an extreme case, so um, the, um, the score of this combination 
it's actually equal to this table property we observe. So this kind of motivates us. We actually don't need to enumerate all the table. We can enumerate start from this test statistic. So we have, we come out with a new tail enumerate procedure that can enumerate the table just from here and to, to the most exclusive case. And we sum over them to get the score. For how about for the more co-occurrence? Because there are still might be like too many table you have to enumerate um, in, in for this community table. So we use the approximation this per, by test the permutation test and the binomial test. So to summary, for the um, gene sets or combination that was exclusive case, we use the exact two to the KTL enumeration pro, pro, uh, algorithm to get the score. And for the, and with, which will be result in very high, almost perfect accuracy and very fast. And for co-occurring case, we use the approximation uh, to get the same, uh, the almost good uh, accuracy and very fast as well. So I just tell you the new web function for Comet. I'm going to dem uh, briefly describe the pipeline for the Comet. So we can take multiple type of alteration and then we, feed, we turn those, those alteration into a binary matrix. And Comet enable to identify multiple pathways simultaneously by multiplying their weight. And we think that it is typically impossible to enumerate all possible combination in this mutation matrix. So we use MCMC to sample in the combination in proportion to their weight. So in the following talk, I will give you uh, how do we summarize the result. So here's uh, actually the table that's showing you the sampling results with running, performing comment uh, for identify two pathway, each of them are four, with four genes. And we summarize the result using the marginal probability graph, which is a complete graph with weighted edge. And so each edge M1, M2 are weighted by how often gene M1 is sampled in the same combination as gene M2. And this kind of review, the review the consensus subgraph with high sampling frequency. So the advantage of using this approach is like it allows us to discover the complex relationship. I will show you this later in the real re results. And the second advantage here is that it's identify module that with different size specify in our parameters. So as you can see, if there really a, a, a gene set with size five, you can see that four of those five genes will form as a, a combination and floating around in this top set. And then finally, we'll summarize as a clique and report in the marginal probability graph. So I'm going to show you that we, uh, we performed our approach on the simulated data and real data. So in the simulated data, we implant one, we will implant one pathway into the simulation data and also the noise. And we run each algorithm on 25 simulated data set for each coverage of implant pathway. So for X, S in here is actually the coverage of implant pathway from low to high. And then we examine the true positive and false positive between the implant pathway and the predict genes sets. So it, as you can see, the blue one comments here perform very well in almost all the coverage. And Dendrix and mu X only perform well in the high coverage sets. And mu X perform pretty well in the low coverage, but you can see it start decreasing F measure um, in, the, in the high coverage sets. And we also perform uh, comment in the real cancer data. So I will tell you here the graph is, is the marginal probability graph. So each edge here represents the mutually exclusive. There's no prior knowledge. So if you put these two modules side by side with the TCGS study, you can see uh, there's highly, highly overlap here with the RTK REST PIK3 signaling pathway. And another module here, you can see this is uh, actually TP53 P53 signaling, and here is RB signaling pathway. And then bridged by this CDKN2A. This overlapping structure kind of explains the different isoform of CDKN2A uh, involved in RB and P53 signaling pathway. And one another interesting observation here is that we can see CDKN2A here is a deletion. And another here, you can see the co-occurrence between the pairs in here. This, this is actually a co-occurrence p-value is very, very stronger than any individual gene co-occurring between the individual genes. So this kind of suggests us um, this copy number deletion on cdkn 2 will affect both sides of form and result in the alteration of these two signaling pathway. And also you can either type it 
one gene in each of the pair to, this, to kind of alter both signaling pathway. And when we're de developing this algorithm, we also observed that mutually exclusive is not only inside the cancer pathway. We also found like mutually exclusive put between the subtype enriched mutation. For example, PIK3CA, TT3, or RB, they are highly mutated in different subtypes in breast cancer. So you can see if you run Comet, you will end up with getting the, the click like this one telling, the, telling you they are quite, they are actually mutually exclusive. So this kind of multiverse, can we simultaneously identify the subtype specific mutation and the pathway together? So we create a, a mutation matrix by implanting the predefined subtype. So each we put we um, implant each subtype a, a new role for each subtype, and in which um, they contain the, all the mutation, excluding the mut excluding those of given the subtype, such that we can identify this mutual exclusive pattern with subtype simultaneously. So here we run TCGA breast cancer with four molecular subtypes. And not surprising, you can see like RB2 and CCND1, they are highly associated with the HER2 enriched and Lumina B subtype respectively. And this, there is a complex structure in the middle. You can see um, it's kind of review the subtype relationship uh, due to the subtype. For example, the AKT1, PIK3, CA, CDH1, they are highly related to Lumina A. And TP3 is highly uh, associated with basal like. And also, it's also reviewed some subtle relationship due to the, the pathway. So you can see like MAP3K1, MCL1, AKT1, PIK3CA, P10 here form a very strong, uh, a strong exclusive pathway here, kind of review saying that, oh, there's a pathway that re related to Domina A. So taking these together, Kame can jointly obtain the exclusive exclusivity uh, both uh, in, the cancer in the cancer pathway or, or the subtype in rich mutation. So I don't have time to go through all the data set we run. So I encourage you to go to poster 30, 32. Um, we run AML and gastric cancer with subtype as well. So to summarize, uh, we have a new scoring function and we simultaneously analyze its multiple combination and we summarize the result over the high scoring collection and outperform other methods in stimulated data and real data. And I encourage you, to, encourage you to download the paper to see for more detail. And also, you can download software to, to, to run to, to, to the K continuity table test. And I would like to thank my advisor, Ben Raphael, and also Max Lesserton, who is uh, the collaborator who has uh, equal contribution in this work. Also, Fabio Vendien and other lab member. And thank you. Time for one or two questions. Um, I have a couple of questions. So basically, you have here defined a new criteria to assess the uh, the significance of the a group of genes. So do you use this criteria to scan all of the possible combinations in your data? Um, no, we didn't. We actually use since there's just too many combinations you can test, right? Say right. if you have thousand genes. You have thousand two three combination of the test. So we use MCMC sampling. So sampling the combination that in proportion to the weight. So end up with you will get the highest scoring sets there. Highest significance one. And then how do you solve the uh, multiple testing problem? Or put it in you know, how do you calculate the family uh, the family wise error rate here? Sorry, can I say again? The uh, you know, how do you correct for the multiple testing here? Uh, because even you use the MCMC, yeah, it's, a, yeah, it's yeah. essentially, you know, scan yeah. all of the possible yeah, combinations. Good question. So actually we compare our results with random data sets. So you only se select the collection that are, we score higher than the random data sets, and then we, don't, and we only choose those significant collection to plot the marginal probability graph. So there's, there's indeed a significant test, but we did, I didn't show up here. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, that was a great talk. So the mutual exclusivity hypothesis, is, am I correct in, in that it assumes a sort of homogeneous tumor population? So because 
uh, we often see when we sample multiple you know, pieces of a tumor, convergent mutations to the same pathway. So would that throw off your analysis if you see that? Yeah, kind of so thing? you say, how you are saying is that like subclonal things, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's a good question. So we haven't considered that in our data, but I can tell you if you, um, if you have, um, if you take the non-pathway, and if you see there are subclonal things in one patient, there should be a lot of co-occurrence, right? So we didn't see that so far. I, I don't know where, why is that. But maybe it, all the sample we get is from this, the, the main subpopulation, sub, sub or is there's just not no less problem in the pathway. So. So our last talk of this session uh, will be Dr. Mary Ellen Geiger, Geiger from um, University of Chicago, who's going to tell us about some of the work we've been doing looking at uh, uh, the radiology information we have with TCG data.